Hello and welcome to this review of my Acom Axial keyboard. This big ass motherfucker is, as you might suspect, the biggest keyboard in my collection at the moment, and it is in fact extremely hard to get all of it in frame or even <laughs> fit it on my desk, so you might see more of the surrounding area on my desk than normal during this video. Acom is a company that makes broadcast equipment it seems, but it's probably a relatively small company because I couldn't find anything about them at all, and in fact I can't find any other models they may have made either. Now this model is described as an edit controller, and I'm guessing that means it's a video editing keyboard, although I'd say it looked more like a character generator. In contrast to even bigger devices, such as the GVG Calypso for example, which is multiple times the size of the Acom, this is an actual keyboard with a full alphanumeric section, which the Calypso doesn't have, so I'd consider that more of a console or a control panel than a keyboard. This thing is legit though. Apart from the alphanumeric block, it comes with something that resembles a nav cluster slash numpad, a bunch of status and function keys, and several blocks of special function keys here at the top, six dials, as well as a trackball and a jog wheel, plus a small display here as well. So there's quite a lot on this keyboard, hence its enormous size. It has by far the most buttons of any keyboard that I own, 189. To put that into perspective, the second most is my Deco Fast Action with 162. You can fit the whole alphabet worth of keys in that difference. Also, the Deco is the second biggest keyboard I own, and <laughs> frankly, this positively dwarfs it. That's because size-wise, it's absolutely ridiculous. Most people consider a Model M to be huge. Those that know better know that a battleship is huge, and I've got one or two models that are even bigger than a battleship, including the Deco, but <laughs> this thing, it's absolutely bonkers. Look at this fucker. Here's what a Model M looks like sitting on top of it. It practically disappears into it. It's the Acom Death Star. Weight-wise, it's also quite a heavy hitter, especially as it also comes with a full metal case, as well as a metal mounting plate for the switches. I wasn't even able to weigh this thing myself because it kept overloading all my balances, but according to Ben, whom I had this ship through, it's around 7.5 kilos, almost twice the weight of a battleship Model F or, in Imperial units, about 1.61 bald eagles. It's fucking NUCLEAR! Ironically though, it's still not the heaviest board I own. That title remains with the Chiron aircraft carrier. That one is around 8.2 kilos, or 1.76 bald eagles. They both feature a full metal case, as well as a metal mounting plate, but the difference is that the Chiron is made out of steel and the Acom is not. The side plates on the Chiron in particular are simply ridiculous, they're 4.5mm thick, or in Imperial units, about mm, two slices of that floppy orange plastic you serve with your cheeseburgers, and which has to be individually wrapped in plastic because otherwise it will simply lose cohesion and disintegrate. Anyway, these side plates alone weigh god knows how much each, and they're basically armour, so that's why the Acom weighs a little bit less, but it's still an absolutely ridiculous weight. So, like I said, it's got some extras, such as this big-ass trackball. There's no obvious mouse buttons for it, but it does have a few buttons above it that looks like they should be used with it, such as this select button here. That's probably the equivalent of the mouse buttons. The ball is a little bit rattly. I think there's too much play inside the housing, but it does roll fairly smoothly. The jog wheel, or shuttle wheel as it's sometimes known, has one of those spool indentations on top of it so you can use it with your finger, much like an old rotary phone, and it rolls fairly smoothly, but it does tend to protest if you go above a certain speed, like this. It's good, but it's not as nice as the one on my Sony BKE keyboard, which is also a huge all-metal behemoth, by the way. Finally, below this display here, there are six dials, which are extremely smooth. I really have no idea what they originally did, but it was probably something to do with light or contrast or sound levels or something along those lines. In fact, the display may have read back the levels of whatever they were supposed to control. I wasn't able to find a picture of this thing actually powered on. 
It's got a fat six pin DIN cable socket at the back. I'm not sure it was for a typical six pin DIN cable, but it might have been some sort of industry standard, I really don't know. And next to it is a serial port, and there's also a model sticker. I took the back panel off so that you can see what the build is like on the inside. Now judging by the weight, I reckon the plates are all aluminium, hence why they weigh so relatively little. It's definitely not steel at least. Anyway, you can see the other panels here as well, and the screw sockets that the plate screws in. And here are the keyboard PCBs, and this is the trackball module, and this is the jog wheel. The keycaps are low uniprofile Cherry M8 type. They might look like double shots, but they're actually lasered and infilled with a noticeable groove in them, and on some of them it's actually become quite dirty. They're thin, but they do look cool in my opinion. Normally I don't like this kind of DSA style keycap, but they look good on this keyboard I think. Three different colours too. And now for the switches. Now they may use Cherry M8 keycaps, but it actually comes with Cherry MX Black. Why do so many interesting and exciting keyboards have ultra boring Cherry MX Black in them? Oh well, anyway, think of them what you will, they're just not really my thing. These keys at the top here are a bit different though. They use some kind of weird switch with a large hollow slider jacketed around a tiny little light bulb. How cool is that? I guess this was their version of status lights, although they do also have keys with standard MX type integrated lights in them. Anyway, I have no idea what make or model these are, but they feel way worse than the cherries. The keycaps aren't fully opaque, so they would have let some light through and backlit, which was almost certainly intended. Must be super awesome to have that. So this is a really cool keyboard, obviously not easy to convert to USB, but man, can you imagine what presence this would lend to your desk? And the whole, I need space for my mouse excuse wouldn't even apply here because you've got a trackball and a jog wheel. Fucking yeah. That's it for this review. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And following is a typing demonstration of me typing on this keyboard.